Well, hello and welcome to another live stream. My name's Shane Olson, and today we're going to be continuing to work on this chameleon that I started two weeks ago during this live stream. You can find that on uh, the ZBrush YouTube channel. Check that out. Anyway, welcome, welcome. Let's see. Hopefully this is working. Hey, what's up, Neil? All right. Jerome, if you're watching, yes, I'm streaming today. <laughs> All right. So let me just get this shared. How are you all doing today? Hope you're doing well. Uh, let's see. Come on, where are you, Pixelogic? ZBrush. Okay. Sometimes it's hard to find the live stream to share it. <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay. Boom. There we go. All right. I can close that. Get back to the chat. Hello. <laughs> hey, Charlie. Hey, Brad. All right. So um, this is where we left off. Um, I, I, I just love the design of this chameleon. I think he's having a really good time trying to like, I think he's, you know, typically butterflies are, are food for chameleons, but I love how this one's fascinated by the butterfly um, rather than, you know, he's going to, he'll probably eat it anyway. But <laughs> in the meantime, he's just like, wow. So yeah, pretty cool. I love, I love uh, characters that have story behind them. Um, that's kind of how I choose my, what I want to sculpt. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I just, it's been, it's always fun to step away from a project for a little bit. It's like I said, it's been two weeks since I opened this up and then re, you kind of review it, you know, with fresh eyes and look at it and go, okay, what, where was I at? Where did I leave off? And what do I need to fix? Cause he's pretty much still in blockout form. And I'm looking at how far or how long these legs are. And I think they need to be a, a, a little bit longer. <laughs> Cricket, really? Oh, that's crazy. Hey, Graham, I'm doing well, thanks. Okay, so let's get... I just want to scale these legs up just a little bit, not too much. Let's go local scale, okay. I don't know how well we're going to do. Oh, i got to turn on symmetry, that would help. There we go, okay. Just not not too much, and I'll probably I'll probably change the size of them after I get him in a pose too. So, hey Graham, you are welcome. You know what? You yeah, you you deserve it. It's uh, an awesome piece. <laughs> Just here for the dad jokes. I'll have to think of some. <laughs> I'll have to think of some. Okay, let's see. looks like my menu didn't show up. So if you if you have this custom user interface, which I give away for free over on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com, if you have this custom user interface that comes with a menu, if that menu doesn't work, um, instead of rebooting ZBrush, what you can do is go up to preferences right here, go to config, and then hit restore custom UI, and it should pop the menu back here. And then you can test it by, uh, I assign it to number two on my keyboard. And then I assign number two to my button on my pen. So then the menu will pop up underneath my pen. And uh, that's how you can test it. So, okay, what was I doing? Oh, I was seeing to make sure spotlight projection is off. Okay. That's right. All right. I'm just trying to uh, <laughs> refresh my memory on this guy. I'm gonna kind of pull his tail around like this. Okay. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna take him to pose pretty pretty early on here. So I'm just gonna stitch him together soon. 
Yeah, right, Cricket. It's um, also I recommend um, getting this it, this utility called Startup Utility Z Z Startup Utility. Don't forget the Z Z. Um, and what that will do is that will load your preference. Well, it'll load some preferences at, as you open up ZBrush, so you won't have to go through and click a bunch of buttons like your sculpture settings or your spotlight projection off, things like that that are easy to forget. I really like having this. And it's just a plugin you can find on the ZBrush Downloads resource page. Um, I also get the Dynamesh Master plugin right here. It's, it used to be called Dynamesh Master, now it's called Dynamesh Utility. And I use that all the time as well. So two plugins I get from there. Okay, let's see, where were we? Let's go, um, I kinda wanna, um, before I stitch things together, I kind of want to get his eyes. I just want to put his irises in for reference just to kind of gauge where things are at. And let's see where dynamic dynamic. I'm going to apply that and subdivide it a couple times and then just paint just kind of a reference there. Um, startup also defaults. Spotlight projection off. Uh huh. It does. Now I have a YouTube video. Hey, um, Neil, would you mind posting that YouTube video just so people can watch it about the startup utility? Please. Thank you very much. Neil's the best. Let's see what this looks like. <laughs> There, like it kind of looks like the chameleon on Sing <laughs> with the derpy eyes. Okay, so I mean, they're kind of um, they're tall, not so circular, oval, I guess is the word. <laughs> what, what's, what's oval? Um, now, one thing you can do if you want to get a perfect oval. Can't really do that with a brush, right? So if you hit B, then M, then mask circle, you can hold down control and mask and get an oval if you want to actually do an oval. And then you can also hold down space bar and move it around and get it right where you want it to be and then let go. And it will, depending on the resolution of your surface, this is a little low. Still, I'm gonna subdivide it one more time. Try that again. There, it's a little cleaner. Yeah, not bad. Then invert that and uh, we can do, do some painting on it. I kinda wanna go darker. And also, um, if the mask is in your way and throwing you off, you can also go to your masking menu and see where it says view mask. You can turn that off. So it's still mask, but you hide it. So you, you, it doesn't interrupt your, your painting flow as it were. <laughs> okay. So let's do, I'll grab this green color off of here. That is a green, green. Holy cow. Let's do it on this side. He's so happy. Look at him. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna switch over to my airbrush. And then I'm gonna get this dark color, not quite black. Maybe bigger. I could do that with masking too, but I'm just gonna hand paint the pupil in here. This is just placeholder, it's not perfect. There 
Hey, Luella, how you doing? And then what we can do, I'm going to clear the mask. Um, I'm going to fill it with a material just to kind of get these uh, highlights here. And I, with, with stuff like this, I like to fill it with toy plastic. It's just a material that ships with ZBrush. Um, how to do that, you click on the material over here and then switch over to toy plastic. This is kind of what it looks like right here. And then you want to switch to M on your, so I have my paintbrush, but I'm going to switch it over to M for material and then fill the object and then switch back to RGB so I don't forget <laughs> and then switch back to skin shade four. And now only the eyes will be filled with that material and get that highlight. Um, any idea why to toy plastic always shows hard edges even with really high poly count? Um, it, well, everything in ZBrush will show hard edges. It's, it's, uh, ZBrush doesn't really have a soft, a soft edge view. So it's always, it's, it's everything all the time. It's really visible on toy plastic. It is when you, when you're zooming in and out like this. But when I let go, see how it smooths? This has been subdivided up to a million, so it's very, very smooth. But um, probably just this reflection. And as you crawl, like as you rotate your model, basically what it's doing is it's going down subdivision levels in order for you to rotate the object. So it, it's, um, it's, it's pinging the CPU a lot less. It has to calculate fewer dots in space, essentially. So that's why you see it as you're rotating it. And then when you let go, it goes back to circular. And it's just because of that highlight. Oh, don't I? Oh, I should have it. Let me, let me turn it on. There it is. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thanks. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to save my coloring on the rest of him until we get him posed. But I just wanted to have his eyes in place for reference there. Okay, and let's let's uh, let's make this vine really quick so we, he can hold it, hold on to it. Um, let's grab his, activate his body. Come on, body, activate. There we go. And I'm just gonna draw out. I'm thinking about just drawing out a cylinder. Cylinder, there we go. Mm, gotta reset this gizmo. And if you if you pull out an object and then push it back in, it will make it the object long and skinny. Uh, split unmasked points. Do you ever have a smaller course for hobbyists like the older one at ArtStation? I'm um, probably not. I'm actually going, I'm going the opposite direction. So I've added a new um, mentorship. So I essentially I want to I want to help fewer people more, if that makes sense, rather than more people less. <laughs> I know that's 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 horrible to say, but um, like I I get the most out of helping people get jobs in the industry and helping them really accelerate. So I made this acceleration program and, um, yeah, that's, that's where the, I get the most benefit personally is from, from helping people out specifically. So, um, yeah, there's a handful of my acceleration program students in here and it's basically just a mentorship that I do, uh, coaching weekly coaching with, and I go over their models and their portfolios and, yeah, it's really nice. It's really fun. Let's see. And if you're wanting to know more information about that, please send me an email at shane.olson at 3dcharacterworkshop.com and I can give you more info. Thanks, Brad. You put in the work. <laughs> I have to add not all me you got to put in the work brad's been killing it okay let's see 
Oh, I still have my circular mask going on. So let's go back to the mask pen. Uh, yes, it will be. So this is, I, I'm not sure what episode this is, but I've done over 200 of these and they're all free and you can watch them on YouTube on the, on the ZBrush channel. Okay. Yeah, Sarah, that last one, you really took off. Sorry, I didn't mean to use your real name. <laughs> I apologize. Okay, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Just turn the, this off here. Let's see. That's not what I wanted to do. Masking. There we go. Should um let's see. Just trying to get this this flow and then we'll subdivide it some more. Down up. something like that. And I want to put some curve to it like this as well from, I don't like to keep things on a plane, especially not snakes. <laughs> There's my dad joke. There's the first dad joke of the day. <laughs> oh, what did I do? I must've uh, moved this out off of symmetry. Let's back it up. <laughs> Gosh, dang it. Thanks symmetry. Let's do it again. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm waiting to see your 3D prints, Brad. I can't wait. I do, I do have to say that, um, oh, you might be able to see back here. Check this out. See, this is, I printed out my cowboy again. And this is the pirate girl. This is the cowboy. Yes, he's missing his arm. His arm's laying down here. He's not glued together yet because I want to paint him first so I can get into the, the hard to get to bits. Um, so... Let's see if I can go full screen. It's, it's kind of blurry, but um, I should I should I can probably pull it up here. Anyway, um, yeah, he, he printed out really really well, and I learned kind of a new technique as far as prepping something for three D printing. And you guys all watch me use the remesh by Union, and I've kind of come to the realization with Dynamo's help, Dynamo 3D, I, I, I talk to him quite often. And um, he, and if you don't know who he is, please go check his stuff out. He's got an awesome Patreon and he just, he, he knows his stuff. It's a little risque, but like pinup, like fan art pinup stuff. Um, but man, he's, he's amazing. So um, just, just in talking, I got thinking about doing remesh by union because usually my process is um i will go through and i will merge visible merge everything together from for the entire character and then i will um duplicate that so i have a, the original duplicate it and then i'll i'll run that dynamesh utility on it which will basically stitch everything together and get rid of all the interior geometry making the model watertight, which is what you need for 3D printing. Um, that's my That was my go-to method. But now, I just thought about, and um, well, with again, with Dynamouse help, I thought about um, your, your final mesh for 3D printing is essentially a decimated mesh. Right? You're just trying to get to a really nice low resolution decimated meaning triangles mesh and 
you can remesh by union triangled meshes, triangulated meshes with decimation. And so remesh by union will also stitch things together and get rid of the interior geometry just like Dynamesh does. But one particular feature of Dynamesh is sometimes it will melt your model slightly. Um, that's the only way I can really describe it is it will, it will melt it somewhat and get rid of some of the sharp details. Well, if you, um, hey Ian, if you, um, what was I trying to say? Um, if, if you just do remesh by union, it's not going to rebuild your entire mesh. It only rebuilds where the objects stitch together. So you can retain the sharp edges without melting your model. And you don't have to go through the extra steps of dynameshing, then decimating, then um, cutting it up and that kind of stuff. So it's just, it's been really nice. Um, a new, yeah, new kind of 3D printing workflow. And so I'm, I want to, uh, yeah, I'm going to make a new lesson on how to do that. Hopefully shortly and add it to my, my course. Hey, Kimmy, how you doing? Okay. Let's do this again. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Whoops. There we go. But I thought I would try to explain it for you folks and you guys can give it a try if you have any idea about what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, sometimes it sounds like a different language I'm speaking. Okay. Now, let's bend this up. Oh. Actually, want to go this direction. Yeah, Cricut, me too. So essentially, you know, that's that's the method that I taught in my first version of my course is is Dynamesh. I was all about Dynamesh. I loved it. And I still do love it. And it's not wrong. It's just that, um, yeah, the, the whole thing about Dynamesh re, rebuilding your mesh, it's um, you have to go through extra steps to keep your detail and it just slows you down. So I'm all about not being slowed down. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Kimmy. Appreciate it. Make these vines go from thick to thin to thick again. Now, I think I'm going to go ahead and add the subdivision levels to this. Okay. He's getting ready to grab it. Look at him. He's so ready. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, the melting, especially like between fingers and things like that. Dynamesh is fantastic for exploring and using like uh, clay buildup when you're when you're just exploring shapes and things like that. I, I love to be able to Dynamesh and just keep going that way. Um, but sometimes, yeah, the rebuilding of the entire mesh as you're going will force me to to you know take precautions and not not allow it to melt. Let's see. So this this is kind of a cool leaf back here. I'm just gonna. Now, now that I have real subdivisions on this vine, I'm not able to use insert multi mesh anymore. That's one of the, um, as soon as you add subdivision levels, it kind of locks you out of certain, the ability, the ability to do certain functions and insert multi mesh is one of them. 
So that's why I usually save the subdivisions until the very, very end. I usually st stay in dynamic subdivisions, but since this vine was so low, um, I just wanted to add real subdivision levels. So, okay. Um, so what I'm gonna do is duplicate this vine and just get rid of the lower subdivision levels. And that way I can just insert meshes now. I'm just gonna make some leaves. So I'm gonna go over on this side and just grab a sphere. And now what I can do, instead of, usually at this point, I would um, split mass, unmasked points, but I don't need that vine anymore. I can just hide it and then delete it. And then continue on with this, uh, this leaf. I'm gonna hide the chameleon for a minute. And just to show this for a second so he's out of the way. Maybe add some thickness in here. Might add these little, I, I'm sure there's vines like connecting the leaves, but I just kind of want to have the leaves there. Um, how much faster would you create something like this if you weren't teaching us? How long would it take you? Um, I would say about 25 to 30% faster, if I were to guess. Put on some good music and, and just go for it. Yeah, something like that. Oops, I didn't mean to turn AccuCurve on inflate. <laughs> I want it on move. Okay. But I have these, I can do an auto groups and put everything in their own group. Sometimes the gizmo will be in the way, so I'll just kind of throw it out of the way and then come back in and tap alt on the surface to get the gizmo to, to re-align itself. Hey James, welcome. And I did not stream last week because um, the folks at ZBrush were at the NAB conference. I believe that was in Vegas. Let's do that. Um, would you ever use an anastrophe effect on a sculpted stylized hair? Uh, so typically, since I do... Um, stylized characters meant for 3D printing um, or toys or collectibles, I will usually avoid that. And what he's talking about is like, I, I believe the, the stretched highlight to make it look like it's being stretched over the surface. But that doesn't mean I wouldn't do that. Um, the only time I really would do that is for um, either an in-game, like if I'm doing a game character or if I'm doing a render, like a proper render with that those highlights on there. Um, I'm not opposed to it, but typically I'll just do, you know, sculpted, sculpted hair as a sculpted piece for meant for 3D printing. But I, and I don't, I honestly don't know enough about it. Like I, I haven't been on a project that uses that a lot. 
So I think it's just more more from a lack of knowledge than anything, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like when I worked on uh, Zenyatta for Blizzard, he didn't, he doesn't have hair, so I didn't. But I know they use it for Overwatch. Okay, and these kind of look like berries of some sort, so I'm just going to insert some berries. <laughs> You're still in episode 10 of 204. That's a lot. That's a lot of episodes. So what is that? 10 times 2 is 20, I think. Sorry, 10 t or 2 times 204 is 4. I have 408 hours of YouTube videos on the Pixelogic live stream. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna grab the color from this butterfly to make these berries, why not? Just to add some continued shape language or color language. Some printer's materials allow to print super thin hairs, at least on shape berries. Um, yeah, well, I, he's taught, I think, I believe he's talking, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, I think Quix is talking about just like game highlights on hair, like stretched highlights, not necessarily how thin or thick the hair is, right? I think they're called anisotropic shaders. Thanks, James. one more this one's kind of longish in the middle I don't want to get it too even, too perfect. With CG, you really want to add the chaos in there so it doesn't look perfect. Right, I mean, there's, and there's something you can do with, with the surface to kind of, kind of make it do that a little bit, but not really. I mean, that's not really the nature of clay or, or a 3D printed surface. Okay. <clears throat> I see you're using the gizmo from the videos I've seen. What, what do you mean a gizmo is a no-no? I think when I started, the um, ZBrush didn't have the gizmo in there, if that's what you're talking about. Yeah, gi yeah, gizmo is is awesome. I, I don't even know when my first, when was my first ZBrush? When did I go live the first time? And you, something about that, I have to say, so when I first recorded my first course, 3D Character Workshop 1.0, four years ago, um, when I first recorded it, it was actually five years ago when I recorded it. Um, I recorded it with the transpose line. And then ZBrush, as soon as I, I launched my course with the transpose line, ZBrush adds the, the gizmo and it immediately made my course look outdated. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's all good. It's all good. April 3rd, 2017. <laughs> 
Oh, geez. Okay, let's add some more leaves. Yeah, I've been at I've been at this for a day or two. <laughs> Recording for Pixelogic, that is. It's been fun. And thank you all for hanging out and watching me. I really appreciate it. All right. I'm just going to bend this leaf a little bit. This reminds me of a freelance job that I did for a company that made posters for films. And they commissioned me to make some 3D objects for, do you remember the movie called Over the Hedge? Remember that film? They commissioned me, this was a, um, a graphic design firm that didn't have 3D capabilities. And they just commissioned me to make some elements for their posters. And they had me make the leaves for the hedge, for Over the Hedge and for Madagascar for the movie posters. You'd think they would just use something from the film, but no, they need, they need the, the design elements. You want a cookie? Okay, get a cookie. <laughs> you can make a 3D cookie. Any tips on making clothes and folds for stylized tune characters? No. Um, that's a really, really big question, and I have an entire section on that in my course. Um, but my, my short answer would be use a lot of reference. So, yeah. I was interning at PDI DreamWorks when they were working on Over the Hedge. Fun to watch all the dailies. Nice. Yeah, I like that. I like that show. It turned out pretty good. Okay. I think that is good for this for now. This is just a background element. I don't want to spend too much time on it. Um, let's make that butterfly. That should be fairly easy to make. <clears throat> let's do the body first. I guess I could do this in the middle so I can use symmetry. Oh, well, <laughs> that's all right. If I do it asymmetrically, it'll be... more organic, right? Yeah, that's, um, yeah, uh, reference is king. I always say that, reference is king. Because if you, even if you don't know how to sculpt something, reference will show you. It will show you the way. That goes with anything. It goes with anatomy, goes with anything, anything. Okay, I'm going to put this, these wings kind of connected on the back. Oops. I forget that control rotate doesn't duplicate an object. Only control move does. So I have to move it first and then rotate it. Oops. Looks like a moth now. <laughs> I 
Thanks, Andrea. Appreciate it. Seems like the in ZBrush initialize menu changed. Um, I haven't really used it too often. I usually just insert my primitive objects. I don't really use the initialize stuff unless I'm using something very specific like gears or something like that. Okay, I think I need to adjust this body now. So just so you know, I don't I don't work for Pixel Logic. I'm just a volunteer. I just demonstrate how to how I use the program. So I'm not I'm not always up on the latest and greatest features and things that ZBrush has. I try and stay updated on it all, but not always. <laughs> Have you ever used one of those? One of what? Sorry. Okay. Let's make some antennae. Now, I'm going to use something I don't use very often. I mean, I could just block it out with a... Oh, have you ever used one of those tablet gloves? Yes, I have. And I have an opinion on them. <laughs> and the opinion is, it chokes off my circulation on my hands. I don't know if I just got the wrong size of one, but it, and Ashley complained of the same thing. Ashley A cubed. She also is another streamer on here. Um, and it just, it makes my hand turn cold. Like when I'm trying to use it, it just chokes off the circulation. I like them, but I, I don't think I build up enough either sweat or I know that sounds gross, but I don't have a problem with my hand sliding across the surface of my screen when I need it. So I just don't wear one. Um, I don't have anything against it, but um, I just don't, I don't use one. Yeah. Yeah, my buddy Matt Thorup uses one. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know why. It just doesn't work for me. <laughs> I have a small graphics Wacom tablet now thinking to move to a screen tablet. However, not so convinced how it's going to increase my performance. Okay. Yep, Redbeard. <laughs> so, um, my opinion on Cintiqs, or or let's just say tablet, uh, screen tablets or tablets, right? Like, what is what is my opinion between the two? My opinion is it's only going to speed up your process. It's not going to make you a better artist. And the way it speeds up your process is. It allows you that one-to-one, -one, you're, you're, you're interacting with your objects one-to-one. -one. There's no disconnect. With a tablet, there is a disconnect because you're not touching the screen with your pen. You're touching your tablet, which is moving something on your screen. So what that means is if you go to draw a nice arc or go to sculpt a nice arc, you may have to do that arc three, four, five, up to, you know, however many times it takes you to do it correctly. Whereas on a screen, you're most likely going to do it one time and get it right the first time because it's a one-to-one, -one, you know, relationship. The downfall is your hands in the way. Sometimes um, screen tablets take up a ton of real estate on your desk. This takes up almost my whole desk. I'm on a 27 inch one. Um, so I, I like them a lot and then I don't at the same time. I do want to upgrade to a 4K. This is an older model, which is not a 4K. 
and the colors just because they're you have to put it on a tilt so um, it's either in your lap on a tilt or on your desk on a tilt um, and so you get some glare sometimes that's not the best um, but I I do love it it's my it is my favorite um, but nothing there's nothing wrong with tablets so my recommendation is only get what you can afford right because tablet or screen it doesn't matter it's not going to make you a better artist i used a tablet for i don't know 12 15 years of my 20 year career so tablets are perfectly fine um, don't feel like you need to get a screen tablet just in order to be a better artist it's not going to make you a better artist so that's my that's my spiel <laughs> yeah so if you can afford it, it's a luxury, get one. If you can't, don't worry, don't worry about it. Don't feel like you're missing out on anything, okay? No FOMO for you. <laughs> but just please don't sculpt with a mouse. That's all I ask. Oh goodness, I'm sorry. You had to had to be an adult in that situation, I guess, huh? <laughs> that sucks. Flappy the wings. I'm gonna bend them up a little bit more. There we go. Okay, let's give him some antennae. <laughs> a cheaper tablet or a cheaper washer? You should probably get a cheaper tablet. <laughs> That's the adult thing to do. <laughs> uh, you know, I still use a mouse for some things. Um, if I'm, if I'm manipulating objects, well, here, here's what you just keep in your mind, whether you can use a mouse or not, or whether you should use a mouse or not. A mouse does not have pressure sensitivity. It's either on or it's off as far as clicking goes. So if you need to have a nice, um, thick to thin or, or subtle to strong stroke, use a pen. Um, but if you're just like retopologizing, retopologizing does not require, uh, pressure sensitivity. You can use a mouse for that. Moving objects around does not require pressure sensitivity. Use a mouse for that. You know, you can, I still use my mouse a lot, but not when I'm sculpting and I need to sculpt something from thick to thin or strong to strong to soft or anything like that. So yes, buy products for life. So the chair I'm sitting in is more expensive than anything I, I own because that's I'm sitting in it for so long I, I want to save my back I don't want to pay for doctor bills invest in a good chair <laughs> more than anything um not really for certain things it does but not not really I wouldn't retop a whole character in it but I'm um, you you could but I don't I don't think I would just yet Okay, now looking at all of this, I think I want to let's move that butterfly. And the second thing I like to invest in, because I listen to them all day long, is a good set of headphones. Save your ears. Save your back. Invest in those things. Those, those things matter. 
you know, if you're going to be, if you're going to be using, if you're going to be listening to music or whatever for eight, 10, 12 hours a day, that's a good thing to invest in. <laughs> that is funny. Okay, let's I'm gonna save this. Yeah, these these are these are over the ear headphones. So if I get on ear headphones, I get ear fatigue, like my ears will hurt, like physically hurt after a while. These have big old cups that I have big ears and they fit in there and they they don't touch my ears and they they sound great. Yeah, I don't really wear earbuds either. Not while I'm working. I do like when I go on walks and stuff like that, but when I'm yeah, when I'm sitting here working, I just want to after a while, and you don't want to get heavy headphones either because they're going to fatigue, get your, you know, your head and your neck will get tired. You just want a light pair that do not touch your ears. Um, Sennheiser is my favorite, but there are, there are many brands out there that, that make good headphones. Yeah, that's funny you say that because these are open back headphones. So the, the music escapes out the back of my headphones. When I was in an office, I couldn't have my music up too loud because my, my workmates like Matt Thorpe, <laughs> they could hear it. So, but I don't like noise canceling ones or closed back ones because they just feel, I feel like I'm underwater. Your ears get too sweaty. These have these 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 cushions. They're they're like uh, fabric cushions rather than leather. So they're not fake leather or real leather. They're just cushion like fabric, and those are the best. They don't make me sweat because I have the same problem. <laughs> right, Toke fan. I totally agree. Why do they even make those things? What the heck? Okay. Um, let's see here. I am going to. I know I need to still do the antenna, but I just want to make his head a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go into T-pose mode really quickly. He's all pink. And then... So T-pose mode is meant... It's, it's called T-pose master. It's meant for posing, but you don't always have to use it for posing. If you want to adjust several objects at once, you can either use the pizza boxes, as Paul Gabriel likes to call them, or you can just use uh, the T-Pose Master to adjust objects, like I'm going to do now. And you can just use masking, hiding, showing. So I'm, I just want to adjust his head. So I'm going to mask off everything except for his head. And then just go in there, put the gizmo at the base of his neck, maybe like this, and then just scale it up. Whoop. And I want to kind of, I'm going to start to pose him. So I'm going to turn his head down. And let's hide all this other stuff. Mask it off. And rotate him down. Because he's going to be kind of holding on to this vine. It sits right on that vine. I might curl it a little bit more. Maybe drop it like this, and then I'll adjust the vine to him. Is making things glow in ZBrush really tedious? Um, I don't know that it's possible, Chris. Honestly.
<laughs> Cricket, really? That's funny. I love that. That scope's too, it's too close to my heart. <laughs> oh, funny. Okay, now we're going to come out of T-Pose mode. You can see, this is one of my favorite things to do. It's like, dit, 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 dit. I see you don't organize your subtools much. Is that by choice, laziness? Yeah, it's laziness for sure, but um, it's also by choice because I combine and split my subtools so often that I ruin my names. Um, and I don't, I usually don't select things over here in my subtool list. I select it out in my scene. So I don't really care what they're named um, until the very, very end. When I'm, if I'm ever going to hand my file off to someone else, then I'll, I'll take the time and go through and rename everything and put stuff in folders. Or if I need to organize it for 3D printing or a game character, then I'll go through and name and organize everything. But while I'm in production, I don't really care what things are named because, yeah, because of those reasons, so. Can't add light to a mesh, not that I know of. I mean, you can put a light in the scene, but not, it doesn't have an emissive that I'm aware of. I think you might be able to do it in post-processing with filters and stuff, but I don't, I don't know. I haven't really done it. So why are objects in ZBrush called subtools? Um, I don't know for sure, but in what I, th what I think um, is the reason why is because when ZBrush was first being built, it was meant to be an illustration program with 3D elements, kind of like, you know, the over the hedge poster I was talking about, where you could make a, like a, like a Photoshop illustration but you could put 3D elements in there and build it up. So it's basically like pixels with Z depth, right? Um, I think that's why they called them pixels instead of pixels. And I don't, I don't, I think that was a ZBrush thing. And tools and subtools, those were those were tools being used to build up your illustration with. They didn't think of them as meshes or, you know, models or anything like that. So that's that's where the the naming convention came from. Chris, to get glow on my models, I'll usually just render them outside of ZBrush. Yeah, ZBrush is still a two and a half D program. Okay. Thanks, Neil. Okay, now I'm just gonna color this vine a darker green, I think. Maybe, maybe this. I kind of like these leaves this dark too, but um, how do you make another light in ZBrush? Um, here I'll show you a couple things to do for that. But one second here. Um, Out of here. Uh, Chris, yeah, you can try that. Sure. If there's an emissive mat cap, I'm not sure if there is or not. I just don't. I just haven't done that in ZBrush, so I wouldn't know, I apologize. Okay, so you can go underneath light here, right here, and you can just turn on a second light. That's how you add it. And then um, and then you can, this little green dot, you can grab it and move it around, and it will light different, different sides of your mesh. 
So that's how you manip manipulate lights inside of ZBrush. You can change the color, the intensity, ambient, that kind of stuff. So kind of like this on, but I'm gonna turn down the intensity on it a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Would you recommend having no graduate? Are you talking about? Um, are you talking about the the gradient in the background? Um, I'm not a huge fan of that gradient. Um, that's why I, this is this is my default workspace, and I just like it to be a flat color. One because. Gradients will have banding when you do a live video like this. It'll band. It'll make it band out in the background. And I just don't like it going from super dark to light. And it just kind of throws it off. I like it just to be even and have your attention on the character rather than the background. Okay. Oh, no worries. I just wanted to make sure I knew what you were talking about. Okay, let's see. Let's po let's just get imposed. Um and Yes, I still need to put antenna on the butterfly, but that's okay. Let's see. So let's save this again. And then pose him. Okay. Um, actually I just, and I just now noticed that his arms aren't really the best for posing. I could. That's okay. I got it. <laughs> just going to hide these objects so they're out of the way. I can probably still, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to bother with it. I'm going to push it back and re Z remesh these fingers. I don't want to try and deal with, you don't want to pose either dynameshed or sculptress objects. You want to, um, I mean, his, his head is okay. Like, cause he just, he just has a little bit of eyebrow movement. But these arms, I'm going to be bending them a lot and it's much easier if it's lower resolution. So. I'm gonna push it back and then build, rebuild these arms with Z remeshed mesh. Okay, let's do this. I'm gonna duplicate them. Um. Let's go six. Hey, those look good. Yeah, yeah. I'll take it. Much better. Okay. And that does get rid of your color. So I'm just going to fill this. <laughs> there you go, Chris. I've seen a lot of people do that. It's a lot of fun. Take take children's drawings and then sculpt them. I did take one of my one of my daughter's drawings. It was a you can watch it back. It was a little mushroom. And I sculpted it up. I want to 3D print it for her. So she can put it on her desk. What a what a cool time to be alive, right? Where you can just like grab a drawing and sculpt it and, and print it. And then it's there on your desk <laughs> or you can make your own toys. Honestly, how cool is that? Okay. I'm going to, I like these, so I'm going to get rid of 
delete. Dang kids. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try this one more time. I'm just gonna click on same and just see if it cleans up. So there's there's some polls in here that aren't the best. There we go. So I like this one. Yeah, they're about the same. Okay, not bad. And then sometimes Z remesher will just kind of pinch in between poly groups. So I'm just gonna go back and smooth those out. And there we go, we're good. If companies won't make what I want and make them myself, right? Yeah, that was, and I've talked about this before, but I'm a huge fan of Thunder Mountain Railroad at Disneyland, Thunder Mountain Railroad. I'm from Utah. I'm near the Red Rocks and like Arches National Park and um, Bryce Canyon, you know, really cool red rock. And um, when I was a kid, I was into model railroads and I'm, I, I guess I'm still into model railroading. I just haven't done it for a long time. So, you know, I've, I've just, and back then there, there was nothing like Thunder Mountain Railroad related that you could get to do that kind of stuff. Now, now there are some, but not very much. And it's, it's just, I've been thinking about how cool would it be to just, you could, you could buy them like a, a toy train, you know, the size you want, the scale you want, and you could pull off the top and just measure the little brackets, the little clips and stuff, and then model your own train and then, and print it out, like 3d print it out, paint it up and click it onto the, the engine. As long as you know, your, your distances and everything are right to, uh, to, to clear all the inner workings. And then you could just make make your own train. How like you can make it look like whatever you want. Steampunk train, Casey Jr., whatever you want. It wouldn't matter. So cool. Anyway, stuff like that. I just gets me excited. Yep, totally kit bash trains. <laughs> and the buildings too, you know, of course, the buildings. I follow this guy on YouTube. His, his name's Dave Meek, and he does, um, I'm trying to remember, it's Thunder, Thunder Mesa Studios, I think, Thunder Mesa, and he has a layout that's very, very similar to what I'm talking about. And he doesn't do 3D printing, he does laser etching, and he cuts out wood and builds his buildings and stuff out of laser etched wood. Yeah, my pleasure, Brad. It's awesome. Congrats. <laughs> okay. Hey, Chuck. Uh, any chance you could do a stylized Boba Fett for the stream? Um, so I, those, that's tricky because um, Boba Fett's owned by Disney. You know, I, I could do kind of a Disney fan art type deal. I, I wanted to take the Boba Fett that I did for Disney Infinity and change him into the Mandalorian. That's one of the things I'd like to do, but it's just the whole, it's, it's kind of tricky, right? Because it's, it's not mine. It's not my character. So, um, I, and it's hard to get permission from Disney, whereas it's easier to get permission from guys like, uh, Shafi, the guy who did this. So, yeah, Mickey Mouse showing up on my doorstep. That's not cool. <laughs> Yeah, you just have to be, you have to be uh, thoughtful of that stuff, you know. Okay, let's get this guy posed now that he's, his legs are better. You know, it's funny too, when you go to pose like this, it will get rid of your poly groups, um, as you can see. So, and I want my poly groups. I'm gonna go back. <laughs> this happens all the time. Have you ever been, been turned down by a concept artist who used 
their work. Um, only once because it was the, the thing I was asking about was already bought and paid for. Um, so I couldn't use it because somebody else owned it and they, they didn't, yeah, they, they didn't like the concept artist didn't own the rights to it any, any longer. Okay. Hold on a second. Got to think about this. Cause, cause I'm thinking about posing it in, in, in uh, blockout mode. It's another thing that Dynamo does and I like it. And then he just like merges it together after it's posed and has a much easier time of it. So, okay, I'm going to turn this off. Um, I don't, that's a good question. I'm not sure because I, I haven't really gotten into NFTs. So I don't really have an opinion on that. But I'm, if I were to guess, I'm, I'm sure it will have an effect on it in one way or another. Yeah, I'm not a fan of it. <laughs> not a fan. All right. Let's see here. Now, half of posing is getting good at hiding, showing, and masking. You'll see me hiding masking that's that's like it's like managing your parts with with uh hiding showing masking <laughs> corb right right i i thought the same thing i'm like well doesn't even look like they're going after permissions Just do whatever they want. Okay, this is going to be tricky. Posing those fingers. Start it higher. Yeah, you'll nine times out of ten, you'll you'll have to I should say ninety nine ten times out of a hundred, you'll have to re sculpt. You try not to, but it's ine inevitable. Asked me on Instagram to use one of my 3D renditions as an NFT. When I said that the original drawing is used as a concept was from another artist. They said, if it's not registered, we can use it. Yeah, BS. <laughs> gosh. Oh my gosh, NFTs. It's like the it's like the Wild West. There's no laws. There's no laws. We can do what we want. That's how they talk too. Oh my goodness, look what I did. This happens all the time. <laughs> look at this look at his bent finger like clear over there. <laughs> oh 
Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm gonna try something. History recall brush. Maybe you guys can help me out. You guys use the history recall brush? Um, there's a way to go back in time that, 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 to before it was broken, like right there. And I think it's hitting, is it control or alt on the timeline? Okay, it looks like it's control. Okay, yep, see I left a little tick there, all right? So now I'm gonna go forward in time when it's all jacked up, okay? And then I'm gonna use this history brush, so it's BH, history recall. Let's clear the ma mask. Okay, why aren't you working? Painting on... It's no worky. Why? I know, right, pro? <laughs> Look how messed up this is. It's so jacked up. All right. It's yeah, okay. I'm just going to I'm just going to roll it back and Oh, did it fix it? No. Clear the mask. I haven't used this brush before, so. Huh. All right, well, I'm just going to roll back and repose it. But. Okay, I'm going to put these two legs in a different sub-tool. Split hidden. There we go. And I won't mess them up. <laughs> yeah, see, now that his arm, his leg is bent, it's like so much shorter than it should be. So these are, these legs, just how I thought, they, they need to be much, much longer. Okay, I'm going to have to ask Paul about that. He can school me on how to use those, how to use that history brush. All right, posing again. Again. And this, this leg also needs to be way underneath him. So let me do that. So I'm kind of talking, speaking out loud as I, as I do this. Oh, maybe I just need to turn his hand. Let me see. It's kind of in front. He's kind of hanging off actually that side. So I need to move the, the vine over. He's hanging off the back side of it. Okay, I'm gonna merge the butterfly and the vine together. So I can just move the whole thing over. Here sometimes zoom in too much when modeling and overshoot with details on a game model. It doesn't need that many details up close. Yep, for sure. So basically if you're gonna if you're making your model for anything like 3D print, game model, whatever. Like zoom out to the size you're gonna look at your character in the game. You don't need to be up up in its business. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like zoom out to where you're gonna see it and just care about that. Okay, I'm gonna have this vine kind of sweep be over like this. Second, sorry. Oh, 
Okay, yep, then I can make his back leg hanging off there like that, as if he's walking forward. There we go, okay. And let's raise this spine. Sorry, this is kind of the stuff I go through when I'm posing this. I just got to evaluate it and see where it's where it's got to be. And I'll pull this over. And he's got to reach around. Okay. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of breaking it a little bit. This arm is going to have to come up and hold on to this. So I kind of need it to swirl back in. <laughs> Gosh. I'm using the um, elastic brush. And then I kind of want this to curl back in by his tail. Whoa, that's really breaking it. <laughs> I don't want to break it. Actually, let me undo, because it looks like I broke it up here too. Yeah, something like that. I apologize if this part's boring. No expression. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I'm still not done yet. He still needs some eyebrows going on, but it's getting there. There we go. That's That's a lot more fun and interesting vine anyway, so that's good. Let's just edit this middle section, and we'll be good to go. Okay. Make the vine come to you. There it goes. Okay, and then I want to make that vine skinnier through here. Yeah, I want to pet it. Oh, you know what? <laughs> when I when I merged these together, it um made the the dynamic uh the dynamic subdivision levels stick. Like it 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 
it's, it's the same as me hitting apply on them. I was trying to go down in subdivision levels, but it won't because it's basically been accepted or verified. So it's, it's real. Oops, that's okay. Now there's a trick you can do if you want to make something like thinner, skinnier, you can use the inflate, but then hold down um, alt to do the opposite and deflate it. Yeah, I, Signor, I could, I, I, I could separate it out and reconstruct it, but I kind of want more subdivision levels in there, so it's good. I was just trying to um, get it to be lighter so I can come in here and, and reduce the uh, thickness of it, but I can do it with... Um, I didn't change the, the topo. Um, I can do it with the inflate. I could rever reverse inflate to get it to work. Thanks for the suggestion. All right, let's just uh, get this leg done now. Posing just kind of takes a while. You have to be patient with it. I like to grow my masks down the the length of whatever I'm doing, like basically add to it. So I add blur and then just kind of work my way down. Hey James, welcome back. And he's got much larger toes too. So I'll probably inflate Nice dad joke. <laughs> Sounds like something I would say. I'm back. I'm front. <laughs> what tablet do you use? I use a Cintiq 27 inch. I, it feels like when, you know, posing is when the, the character really, really comes to life. Solo this for a second and hide this so I can see it. Make his thumb wrap around the back.
Hey, in a Honda, how's it going? Is there a way I can share what I've been doing since I started your streams? Um, I, I mean, you can post a, you can post a link in chat, I guess, if you want to. Excited to see him. I don't usually pose during my live streams, if you've ever noticed. Sometimes I do, but not, not usually. Thought I would today, because then you can kind of see my process here. Oops, one inflate. What would you recommend to a beginner? Um, just to start with, um, I I recommend blocking out simple characters with primitive shapes. Do you put the poses on a layer? I don't. <laughs> Cricket. Yeah, it's been in there for a long time. So I'm going to kind of square these fingers off a little bit so they're not just like round hoses. So they actually have a, a change of direction at the, at the quote unquote knuckles. <laughs> Something like this. There we go. I'm happy with that one. Yeah, that's essentially the only time I ever use layers is when I want to add detail and I don't want to commit. Why did you mask off? And I usually don't pose my block out. I usually wait until everything's combined and stitched and all that kind of stuff, but. Oops, I'm messing up the thumb back there. That's why. Any tip on how to distribute the number of subtools? I mean, I see you have the entire leg in one. Um, honestly, I just break it up however I need it to be. So I don't, I don't really pay attention. I don't think about it. You know, I just, I just go, well, it's not that I don't think about it. I don't, I don't think about it in that way. I don't, I don't think about what's going on with my sub tools. It's just, if I need to move several things at once, I'll combine them together. And just like I split these other legs off on the other side because I accidentally started to pose those two when I was too zoomed in on the on the legs, so I just broke them off into their own separate subtools. And that's that's kind of how I think about them more is like just what do I need to do with them? All right. 
Move these to the back. I'm going to say that for me, when I was a beginner in your 3D character workshop, the first version was the real deal. It made me do the jump, and I recommend it to anyone. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. For new people, for people starting, I would recommend starting off with Warhammer Space Marines. Their armor and weapons have good ratio. Um, I, think, I think Warhammer Space Marines, I, I think it's a good... Um, it's good advice, but I think it's not for a beginner because they're quite, quite detailed. But you're right. I, I do. Yeah, the ratio is pretty good. But like if it was your first day in ZBrush, I would not start out with a, with a Warhammer figure in my personal opinion. And they're they're mostly um hard surface all that armor is hard surface stuff usually what i tell my uh students to do is block out either a saturday morning cartoon character or a pokemon character because they're super basic super basic they're just basic primitive shapes First day Pokemon, second day Space Marines. <laughs> sure, I'll take it. <laughs> uh, funny. one sometimes you can move your hand into place your character's hand into place and then deal with the arm later Even though I'm losing tons of volume. Oh, Neil, are you wake? Are you making Chief Quimby? Nice. <laughs> you see that <clears throat> cricket? You know the the meme about that one. Get get a cease and desist from Disney. Start over. How to draw a cat. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Shane. Asking is your friend. Here's a here's another piece of advice too. Um, with, when you're sculpting for say 3D printing, don't feel like you are married to the 
um, the distance proportions. So as you can see, I'm stretching these legs all over the place. If this was rigged, it would be difficult. I would have to be, I would be stuck with what the original proportions were because they're rigged to, to a bone system. And the, as long as it doesn't have squash and stretch built in, you're kind of restricted to the bone length, what, you're, what it's stuck to. And you would have to pose that. But with this one, um, it's, you know, you can, you can squash it and stretch it and move it and do whatever the heck you need to do with it without being bound to some rig. Hey James. Oh, thanks. <laughs> nice. Yeah, but you got to think, um, Pixar's been around for a long time and most of their character artists were, uh, started back when, you know, rigging wasn't as complex as it, as it is now and character modeling wasn't as complex as it is, as it is now. And they have people that I, I believe that do the texturing work. So they hand that stuff off and the, the hair systems and the, um, cloth simulators and all that kind of stuff. Same with Disney feature. So I'm not too surprised. I guess I'm surprised based on today's standards, but not surprised based on Pixar's history. <laughs> I need to get this leg out of here. Man. <sighs> <sighs> yeah. Oh, Neil, you were? Okay. I need to I need to get in there and hang out more. So if you guys don't know, um I teach an online course called the 3D Character Workshop. And as part of that th character workshop, I have a a forum and a discord channel and in that discord channel I have some live voice chat video channels where s some students will hang out there and sculpt during the day with other students and it's it, it's a lot of fun So if you want to know more about the 3D Character Workshop, you can just go to 3dcharacterworkshop.com and check it out. Yeah, there's usually someone in there unless it's the middle of the night. And even then, <laughs> Oops. because there's different time zones.
Does the art and curriculum you teach all stylized? Or you teach realism? It's all stylized. Um, you can you can do realistic characters based off of what I teach, but I teach stylized characters. And what what I mean by that is I teach simplification, exaggeration. Um, but I also teach anatomy, and the anatomy is based on realism, but just stylized realism. So exaggeration, simplification. Yeah, and the, the students, um, they drive a monthly challenge in, in the Discord. Um, so it's like in this month, it's Mermaid, along with the, the concept art challenge Mermaid that Tom Bancroft puts, puts on. Um, how, much is the, how much does the workshop cover? It covers the entire character from start to finish. And then some. So I, I, I basically don't. I don't like to just walk you through one character and then be done. I want you to be able to have the skill set to make any character you want. So I go over skill sets, like clothing and hair and that kind of stuff. So you can hopefully tackle any character you run across, rather than, you know, it's like learning one song on the piano. I want to teach you how to play the piano not just learn one song <laughs> if that makes sense but that being said i do have what i have like three characters in there now that i do walk you all the way through so you can see it in practice I gotta make these little, these little uh, connection points, these little sockets that they're sticking in. <laughs> okay, let's get these looking the same. Uh, yes, it's private, private student only channel or server, Discord server. I don't, I don't have a public one. Come on, there we go. And then I have a forum as well. Let me pull this up. Or you can post your finished artwork. Cricket, you crack me up. <laughs> uh, I just, I, I, I don't have the patience for it, and I don't want to manage it. And yeah, none of that. No thanks. So um, we just finished up a Pokemon challenge, and here's here's what the forum looks like. You can see it. See, I have a a top row. Um, these, this is all student work. None of my work is on here. Um, you can kind of see some of the Pokemon that people have made. 3D prints. Super cool. Yeah. Anyway, all, all different levels of uh, skill. Really great stuff. And some people are making props and things. Some people do realistic characters. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all over the place. So that's what the forum looks like, if you're wanting to know. Yeah, that Bulbasaur. It's like a fan art of a fan art. <laughs> oh, 
don't like what this that happy accident on that vine there. Okay, so let's let's do the back legs now, or the the side, the left side legs. All right, but I do want to bend his body. Uh, James, yes, it's a private Discord server for only students. Yeah, I was just joking about I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to um I wouldn't want to manage a public discord. I just don't have the time. <laughs> Sorry. You're welcome to join us. Um, based on your experience, do you feel that the animation and gaming industry is in need of stylized based artists or realism? They have both. There's plenty of both. Plenty. Plenty, plenty. So I, I wouldn't say one or the other. Um, there's games and television and film coming out all the time that's stylized and vice versa with and realism so yeah it's just i would i wouldn't follow the money i would follow your passion what do you like to do not what would i make the most money doing that's yeah if you're thinking of it that way that's the wrong way to think about it i mean yes money's a factor but i wouldn't i wouldn't think of it I would I would go go with your passion, not with your yeah. Okay. Um, so if you're not passionate about stylized characters and you really like realistic characters, do that. Hundred percent. Your character work will just be better if you do that. Roy, what's going on, Roy? <laughs> How you doing, man? Is this the Roy I know? It's the Roy I know. If not, that's cool too. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's, you know, there's nothing wrong with, um, with, with both, you know, you can dabble in both. Nice, Roy. It's been a long time, man. We should, uh, we got to hang out. It's been a long time. Jeez. I'm trying to think of when, how long it's been. All right. Turn his head. <laughs> 84 years at least ever used a self-made I don't know what a roar shit test is I'm sorry are you, is, are you talking about an ecorche model like a like a nude like a nude sculpt for reference Let's see here. So Carlos, if you go to go to 3D Character Workshop, um, looks like this. And if you click on this green button, you'll you can learn more about it there, or you can send me an email if you want even more information. You can send it to um shane.olson at 3dcharacterworkshop.com
ink oh ink blots oh 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 um not no i ha not really not really i mean i guess i have you can play with like just primitive objects and block out and start so, so i did that with a leprechaun not too long ago i just kind of threw a leprechaun together using references from all over the place you know just uh, i just kind of mo uh, merged a whole bunch of different references together and came up with my own leprechaun so kind of i guess but I haven't really done like a, you know, draw a, a, just a crazy shape and then make a character out of it. I haven't done that. Okay. Just turn its head a little bit. And I'll make the butterfly so he's looking at it. Okay, let's see. I'm going to need to move the, the leaves and flowers and make them smaller and stuff. <laughs> yeah, cricket. <laughs> Oh, funny. Let's see. Let's go back. Nice. That sounds fun. You know, I have these headphones on. Guess what I'm listening to? Nothing. I just, I don't have anything on. Why don't I have anything on? I have his leg swinging way underneath like this. Kind of to the back. Kind of turning. Yeah, that's fun. It does. It does. You get in the zone. I just need to bend the fingers so they're not so... <laughs> um, what platform do you recommend for building a reputation portfolio and getting your name out there as a 3D artist? I have an art station. I'm about to take my first. Um, I was going to say art station. Yeah, art stations by far. That's like the... As of today, it's kind of the industry standard as far as where you where you put your work to show people. Um, yeah, ArtStation is the go-to. <laughs> Cricket, that's funny. Don't bother me, I'm sculpting. That needs to be a t-shirt. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Make him reach clear over here. So this, this side, his, his body is scrunched and his legs are together. And on this side, he's stretching. So it's going to be further out and out. something like this and I'll stretch it even more I think that'll work so they really only look at portfolios on art station yeah it's just it's too convenient it's too convenient like if you're a if you're a character modeler you're not going to be sending demo reels right you're not an animator you're not sending them motion um and and this is me personally I wouldn't make turntables of your character um I mean, you can, 
and you can put videos up on ArtStation and, and do a turntable of your character. Um, but my, my favorite thing to view is a Marmoset viewer as, a, as someone looking to hire another character artist because that way I can, I can look in detail at the character model. Um, like I can spin it around, I can see the textures, I can see the wireframes, I can look at specific things. If it's a turntable, I have to like slow the video down or stop it and pause it. And if um, you didn't show the part that I want to look at, then I can't see it, that kind of thing. So, um, but one one caveat with the Marmoset thing and SculptFab is um, people can rip the models out of there. So if you don't want to share your model with the world, then don't put it in Marmoset because people will yoink it and sell it. So yeah, just be just be wary of that. Okay. So like if I put this guy on Sketchfab, people could yoink it and um, print it if they wanted to. But it's a small thing, very small. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. If but if you're getting a job, it's much it's like don't even worry about it. Just stick it up on a Marmoset viewer and you're fine. So all right. I think we are done for today. Um, James, uh, yeah, yeah, you can. I don't, I don't really have enough time to review your model while I'm streaming here. You can send it to me if you want, but yeah, I, I'd be happy to take a look at it. Just wanted to pull this eyebrow down a little bit and put him in this expression. Thanks, Brad. Yeah, he's getting there. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with this guy. Pretty stoked. You set your model on not down. That doesn't matter. Like people will, will have uh, like shady programs that will rip it out of there. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you try not to let them download it or not. They'll still they'll still get it because it's it's in the website itself. It's not protected. Yeah, just so you know. Yep. There's certain few people that ruin it for everybody else. Turn on perspective. Would it be appropriate to say model available? Sure, sure. But that being said though, you want it to be as, as painless as possible for you to get hired. So just, just think about that too. You know, if, if somebody has to go out of their way to ask you for the model and then, then you send it in some kind of file format and they have to open it in some you know what I mean? It's like it's causing pain points to stop them from looking at your stuff to hire you. So if they're really, really busy, they might just say, you know what, I'm just, I'm going to pass and go to the next one. So you just want to make it as easy as possible for them to view your model and, and get the, get the job. You know, I'm just saying, don't, don't put anything up on ArtStation that you can't share. Even if you don't want to share it, just assume that somebody's going to steal it. That's all I'm trying to say. And it sucks that it happens, but it does. And you can just put a whole bunch of images up too if you don't want to do a Marmoset viewer. Just make sure you're diligent with, with as many views as possible. All right, you guys, I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching and have a wonderful, wonderful week. Happy sculpting. 
And as usual, I give my brushes and my user interface away for free. You can get them over on 3dcharacterworkshop.com. If you go over there and just scroll down to where you see the blue, you'll find it. And you can have these brushes um, in my menu file and my ruler and all that. And if you also want to learn more about the course that I teach online to learn how to scope things like this, you can also check it out over there. Uh, same place, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. Have a wonderful week. Thanks, Neil. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, everybody. Take care. We'll see you next week.